What's up guys, it's Dollmatter Matter here, and today we're gonna to be reacting to another Midnight's Edge video. So this one is Madam Web flopping because female audiences are failing it, uh, which is interesting. I honestly completely forgot this movie came out. Uh, I didn't see any advertisement for it until I wanna say like a week or two before it was released. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much, you know, all, all the advertisement for it. I haven't really heard anything about it since it came out. Uh, so I just Googled it real quick. The average rating uh, uh, is a, a 2.6 out of 5. So, you know, just slightly above uh, 50%. Um, it bu budget was $80 million and it made $100 million. So they, I don't know, when they say the budget, I don't know if they include marketing budget. So they at most made $20 million off of it, which is not a very good ROI for a movie. Uh, and probably lost money on it because I don't think that includes advertising. Uh, but to be fair, they didn't advertise it very much, so maybe their advertising budget was like 10 grand. But anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. Well, hardly anyone showed up for last year's The Marvels. Many were distraught to find that of the audience that did show up, the majority were men. That left the movie all out of excuses, because the target audience of women were the ones that let it down by failing to show up. Now, it would appear that that trend has continued. The problem is that they take these things that are... Almost entire, like they're very male skewed, right? Like if you look at like the statistics for these things, a lot of the time they're like ninety to ninety five percent male, and then you have you know fans, sometimes not even fans, that are like, okay, we need to make it parody. It needs to be fifty fifty percent. The problem is certain things are are more skewed towards men, so things are more skewed towards women. Because of just interest, whether that be like you know cultural or biological or whatever, it depends on the thing, right? Uh, but you're you're not, you're not going to change that just by releasing a single movie. So like trying to go after a demographic that doesn't really watch or you know you see this a lot with video games too, play that type of game or watch that type of movie is not going to end well, right? Um, you, you're obviously you're going to alienate your core base because they you pr sometimes pretty explicitly tell them it's not for them, and then you're going to not attract this new base because even if it's you know for them they don't care they're not into that kind of thing anyway. Uh, but yeah, you see this where like, you know, a, a lot of the time you'll see, you know, some of the like 5% that that's a female base. So like, there's female fans too. They need to make more stuff for, for women. It's like, okay, but yeah, there's only 5% of you. Like you're an outlier. You're not the norm, uh, for either this group or for what women are into. But anyway, we'll continue. Continued with Madam Web as much more so than men. It is the female audience that is letting the movie down. <laughs> The Night's Edge fasting. Sony and Marvel's Madam Web is a disaster, and no one is pretending otherwise, not even the entertainment media complex. The movie's budget is listed as 80 million, a figure the industry trades normally wouldn't question. But Deadline Hollywood had no qualms about throwing Sony under the bus here, with their correspondent Anthony D'Alessandro writing, I've gotten phone calls that the budget for this film is much higher at north of 100 million. But I'm also told Sony reined it in under 100 million net with Massachusetts tax credits and post-production London tax credits where the VFX were handled. TSG is a co-financier here on the Dakota Johnson Sydney Sweeney movie, as Sony has buffered its risk. I understand if they can get to a 40 to 50 million global opening, the spider bite from Adam Webb won't gush a lot of red ink, but some. Yeah, that is really what separates this movie from the Marvels and other- Ooh, so... <clears throat> so the budget was actually over 100 million, that's after tax credits, so that's interesting. Yeah, so they, they definitely lost money on this. Other recent Disney flopbusters. Even if Madam Web came in at 100 million, Disney spends three times that amount on their movies, which is how one Marvel or Pixar or Star Wars movie can lose upwards of 200 million all on its own. The saving grace for Sony is that while they will lose money on Madam Web, that is practically a guarantee. The loss will, at worst, be in the tens of millions, not hundreds of million. Losing tens of million is obviously not great either, but against the backdrop of the Marvels, it does fall into the could-have-been-worse category. What did the Marvels end up, uh... 
I want to check this out. The Marvels. I want to know what they made. Um, so, budget was uh, $219 net, which so it's net versus gross. I'm assuming net is after uh, tax rebates and stuff. Box office is $206 million. So, yeah, they lost $13 million on that movie, which is actually not as bad as I thought. Um, and I, I guess it's still, like, obviously the box office, it, that's done, right? That's gone. But they still can make their money back off of it from, like, merchandising and stuff. So they probably will make a small profit on that. Um, but, yeah, definitely not what they were looking to, right? You have all these MCU movies. I wonder if I can actually oh, – they, they probably have this uh, – on like Wikipedia or something, list of MCU films. Um, they have them in into phases. Let's let's just go to Phase Four films. Do, oh, do they not have them organized by box office? No, they don't have that as an option. Um, <clears throat> okay, we got Box Office Mojo. When was this last updated? Uh, Black Panther. Okay, wait, this is organized by lifetime. Lifetime gross. Iron oh wait, why is the re Iron Man re-release on here? Like, bro, that's not what we're looking for. Um, yeah. Well, okay, so well, uh, uh, yeah. Lifetime gross. Uh, this isn't accurate either. Um, because I know some of these movies made over a billion dollars, and they have the highest one at eight hundred million. Unless it's inflation adjusted for today, I don't know. Uh, list of all Marvel movies based on how much money they made. Uh, yeah, this is just like one of those stupid fucking, well, one, they want me to pay for it, and two. Yeah, so it's, it's hard to find out. I'm surprised. I know they used to have this on the MCU Wikipedia page. I wonder if they started hiding it or trying to remove it once it started not going so well. Because, yeah, like, if you look at, like, all, the majority of the, uh, Infinity Saga films, right, they were making really good money. There was a handful that didn't do very well, like Thor 2 I don't think did very well. Um, there was a couple others. That I don't think The Incredible Hulk, the first one, or I guess technically the only one, uh, didn't do that well. Um, but the, for the, the vast majority of them made money, and by the time you got to like near the end of the, uh, the Infinity Saga, they were making like a billion dollars per movie. Like almost every Marvel movie would come out and make like a billion dollars. Uh, so yeah, obviously, you know, the fact that they only made $200 million on this is not very good. So what happened? What went wrong here? Well, Deadlines The Alessandro writes, I'm told that S.J. Clarkson, the filmmaker, aimed to make a non-traditional Marvel movie. Uh-oh, sound the red alert. Something in the spirit of the female thrillers that Shelley Lansing used to make at Paramount, and it's all going sideways. Well, that explains it right there. TV director S.J. Clarkson bit over way more than she could chew, because while the reference name will fly right over the heads of most, while a studio executive at Paramount, the female thrillers Sherry Lansing produced included the likes of Fatal Attraction, The Accused, and Indecent Proposal, none of which any Marvel movie should ever aspire to be anything like, and even trying is going to end in disaster, which... Yeah, <laughs> Like, I, I'm not, I, I know, I've heard of Fatal Attraction, I haven't even heard of the other two movies, but I don't think the problem is necessarily that, like, you have, you know, even within the Marvel, right, they're obviously all superhero movies, but you also have different sub-genres, like, right, some of them are, like, the first Ant-Man is, like, a heist movie, some of them are, like, buddy cop movies, like, uh, Thor Ragnarok, like, they, they vary, they have, like, different vibes and different, uh, genres that they fit within, like, sub-genres, I guess you could call it, within the superhero franchise, um, but... Again, they all p appeal towards the male audience or attempt to, right? Even, like, they're, they're, they should be, I should say, because that's who is, like, the, the main backers of these films. But anyway. It just did. But Deadline Hollywood had another interesting revelation. For those wondering why Sony had the scribes from the doomed Morbius come back here for Madam Web, I understand they wrote the first draft of the script, and that Clarkson's writing partner, Claire Parker, yielded the shooting script. Uh, this was a chance for kitchen. Sony to do something different, but there were a lot of complications along the way. That right there is them throwing both S.J. Clarkson and her writing partner, Claire Parker, under the bus. 
I hope they both have a loyal group of friends in television ready to welcome them back, because their budding careers in feature films will have a hard time overcoming this. Given the development history, which we covered in the previous video, Madam Web was always going to be a bad movie. No other option was ever on the table. But even so, it couldn't have come at a worse time. As Deadline Hollywood writes, it also doesn't help to have this female-driven superhero movie arrive in the wake of the Marvels, which is the lowest for Disney's MCU at 84.5 million domestic, 206 million worldwide. And if you remove China from that equation, which you totally should, then the worldwide box office is actually under 200 million. That makes Madam Web but another data point in a trend we already knew. When you try to force a male brand into becoming a female brand, it is the female audience the movie caters towards that will not show up. Deadline yeah. Hollywood right? 100%, because like, the thing is, even though a lot of the time you have certain uh, women within these you know, things that claim that they want more female-centric stuff, right? And, and it's a mi it, that's a minority of a minority, right? Because you're already talking about I'm, I'm, you know, a minority of the audience is female, right? Depending on exactly what you're talking about. Sometimes it's like as low as like 5% of a given game or franchise has a female audience, right? And then of that 5%, you have a minority of that 5% because it's not all of them, right? It's not even the majority of them. Um, that are complaining that it doesn't focus enough on females, right? Because obviously if they if they cared about that, right, if most of them cared about that, they wouldn't be watching it, right? They come to watch it because, you know, for one reason or another, they're more interested in this than stuff that's like stereotypically for women. So you have a minority of a minority that you're catering to, and then when you make what that minority of a minority wants, you end up with something that only that minority of the minority likes, and, you, you know, you lose a large percentage of your male audience. You lose a, a large percentage of even your already small female audience. Um, and the only people that you're going to have there are your, like, absolute hardcore diehard fans that need to see or do or watch or play absolutely everything from that franchise, right? So in this case, you'll have, like, the super, super, super hardcore comic book fans that will, you know, they need to see absolutely everything, no matter how bad they know it is. And then also you'll have some people that'll just go see it. It's like, oh, it's a Spider-Man movie. And they don't they don't really know anything else about it, right? Uh, they're like, oh, cool. It's you know, Spider-Man movie with women, right? They, they're kind of like aloof, I guess is the best way to put it. So you'll have like the super, super hardcores and then a couple of people that are aloof. But the, the vast majority of people are not going to watch it, right? Because it's not something... It's, it, not only is it not for them, it's explicitly advertised as not for you. And then it's like, it's like, you know, this isn't for you, this isn't for you, this isn't for you. Oh my god, this did so poorly, why didn't you show up? Right? It's like, uh, you told me it's not for me. Pretty aggressively, actually. Sony went after young women with Madam Web, with 75% of its 60 million global p a allocated towards social and TikTok. Social and TikTok being code for geared towards women. Since 75% of the advertising budget went there, you'd expect the audience to be majority female, but nope. The Marvel Spider-Man spin-off property is bringing in men 53% and women 47%. That means no blaming the male audience. So e yeah, so even though this was explicitly marketed towards females, it still had a majority male audience. And I, I would I would like to see, you know, if you, if you take like just like the regular Spider-Man movies, um, how well they performed, uh, you know, or sorry, how what what percentage was male and female audience then? I, I imagine that like Spider-Man probably does pretty well among female audiences just because it's got, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, the love interest, the girl that plays Mary Jane. Um, I can't remember her name. But she, she's a very popular girl, right? Very popular on social media, very popular with the Zoomers. Um, and then obviously she has, you know, Peter Parker as her love interest. So you have that love story that girls like to watch, right? Yeah, you know, there's definitely elements of that that, like, very much, very well fit into, like, a, a more female-minded movie, even though it's obviously directed towards young boys. Um, versus something like a... A Thor Ragnarok, I would imagine, would have a much more male audience than a Spider-Man. Uh, because, the, I mean, you kind of, like, there's kind of sort of some stuff with, like, the love triangle, uh, but, or with the love in it, but it's not really as heavily focused on. It's much more like a, a beat-em-up buddy cop movie. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, it's, 
the fact that it's still a majority male audience, despite the fact that they tried to make this like a, you know, a female movie and it's still a majority male audience. I, I mean, I I'm not surprised, but I, I'm surprised they keep trying to do this because it always works out so poorly. Audience for sitting this movie out when the majority of the attending audience were in fact men. Deadline Hollywood even addresses the studio's penchant for blaming the male audience by saying, Many will say that fanboys are turning on female superhero movies. That's a dog ate my homework excuse on behalf of the industry. Make a great movie and they'll turn out. Exhibit A being the female charged Black Panther Wakanda Forever at 453 million domestic and 859 million worldwide. Well, kudos to Deadline. Yeah, and honestly, like you see this with, like a lot of films, even uh, like the first Captain Marvel movie, I'm pretty sure made nearly a billion dollars, and it was pretty poorly received um, because it, you know, it wasn't one of the best movies. But you know, at the time, Marvel was at its high. Yeah, it made 1.31 billion dollars, right? So people went out and saw that because at its time, Marvel was still at its high, and even though it was probably one of the f worst movies in the you know, the Infinity Saga of MCU, people are like, oh, it's a Marvel movie, it'll be good, right? Even if it has a female character. You know, be, be, you know, e even though, like, I guess the, the aggressive political stuff had started by then, um, but it really started to... It's kind of, it, like, ramped up in phases, right? It obviously kind of started to ramp up in, like, the mid-20-teens and then ramped up a little bit more... Uh, and then now it seems to finally be dying off with, like, some companies that just refuse to end it. But... Um, but yeah, like there's a lot of popular media franchises that have female leads, and they're popular among male audiences, right? Probably the most famous one is uh, the Aliens franchise, right? It, you, you know, uh, this is a franchise that like is when did the, the first Aliens movie come out? I want to say like the '80s, I think it was, um, and it's still crazy popular. The Underworld movies are crazy popular, uh, or at least they were. They kind of you know beat the dead horse with that one, and then eventually died off. But there's historically there's been a lot of you know, very popular female-driven movies, which is why it's such a weird excuse to make, right? This is the same thing that they do with, uh, you know, ethnic minorities, right? You'll have, like, somebody like Bruce Lee, who's, like, this incredibly popular Asian actor way back in the 60s and 70s, and they still act like it's, you know, oh, my God, I can't believe people won't go see a movie with an Asian actor. It's like, I mean, they will. Or, you know, black actors who've been, you know, obviously huge in Hollywood for decades and decades, right? And then... You know, if a movie with a black actor performs really, oh my god, I can't believe they wouldn't go see a black actor, right? And a lot of the time, they very, like, ham-fistedly have political views within these movies. And not only within the movies, but within the advertisement and the whole talk around the movie. And people don't like those politics, right? They have no problem with black people. They have no problem with women. They have no problem with Asians or, you know, whatever ethnic or sexual minority it is. But when you make it a overtly political thing and you, you know, you know, you, you stand on this hill and this is the hill that you're going to die on, that this is a political movie, you automatically alienate at least half of the population, right? Because everyone's roughly divided into two political parties. So you alienate that one political party, Right. But then, depending on exactly what you're doing, you might alienate part of your political party too, right? Because the the woke thing, the whole woke thing, is kind of a more far left thing than like a lot of the mainstream Democrats, at least the ones that are getting elected to office, right? It's it's very popular within Hollywood. It's very popular within academia. It's very popular within like certain areas, like San Francisco and stuff like that. But as far as like the mainstream left wing across America, it's not very popular, right? Uh, it's kind of a minority among, you know, it's a minority among a certain faction. So you're alienating at least half the population with all Republicans. And then you're alienating a, you know, a sizable percentage of even your own party out of a very blatantly political thing. And then you try to then, you know, after very aggressively and blatantly making this a political thing, when it comes back and bites you in the face, you try to make these excuses that it was never a political thing or that it's, you know, sexism, racism, homophobia, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, no, like you made this a political thing. It, yeah, anyway. In Hollywood, that's actually true. Though I would hasten to add that it was the goodwill from the first Black Panther and misplaced Marvel brand loyalty that made so many show up for female Black Panther. Keep the water Mexicans out of Wakanda forever. <laughs> that movie itself was so bad and damaged the Marvel brand such that it died. That is one of the funniest thing about the Wakanda movies is how um, the, the first one is basically... Uh, 
about like fighting about like how exactly our ethno shit state should function. Yes, we're going to have an ethno state, but how should it function? Should we, it, you know, should we be, you know, sh- you've got uh, Killmonger who's literally Black Hitler, right? Uh, we should take over the entire world and just have our people as the only ones remaining and on top. Or should we have a isolationist black nationalist state? Right, but it's like very obvious. Like the, the the black nationalism is not up for question. It's do we follow Black Hitler or do we follow like isolationist uh, pre-war America fucking um, T'Challa? Right. <laughs> and the funniest thing was the amount of black people I saw, and, and sometimes even white people, talk about how, like, Killmonger is such a good hero. I actually think he's the good guy. It's like you realize he is literally black Hitler. <laughs> like, I don't even mean that as, like, a you're literally Hitler, like, making fun of somebody, you know, like, the, uh, the accuse your enemies of being Hitler. I mean, like, almost all of his ideology is literally just, like, it's like take Mein Kampf and replace Jews with white people and white people with blacks, and it's fucking, it's, it's uh, the uh, Killmonger, you know, manifesto um and then yeah this one is uh we need to keep the mexicans out of our ethno state it's so funny because like i the the uh the, the, the cognitive dissonance between you know that you see among like the the left wing hollywood uh you know uh, intelligentsia like all those type of people right you know the, the usual suspects i don't think they realize that they're arguing the exact same arguments that um yeah, a, a lot of like the more far right people do, but they're just arguing it from a black perspective instead of a white perspective. I find it so funny, but anyway. Directly contributed to subsequent Marvel movies, beginning with Quantumania and so far culminating with the Marvels flopping. But going back to the audience for Madam Web specifically, divided by gender and age, the audience were men over 25 attending the most at 31% and awarding the movie a 50% grade on post track, followed by women over 25 at 24% of the audience awarding the movie a 63% grade at post track, then women under 25 made up 23% of the audience, awarding the movie a 62% grade at post track, and the final 22% of the audience were men under 25, giving the movie its worst post track grade at 42%. That's an interesting observation. The youngest men who are the most conditioned and that have grown up with nothing but girl bosses in entertainment gave Madam Web the lowest post-track rating of all audience groups. Overall though, the movie is rated horribly and there is zero hype or excitement for it. In the past, studios have used Parrot Analytics to track social media interactions, and Parrot Analytics famously only counted impressions but gave no distinction on whether or not they were positive or negative, meaning they counted something like hashtag cancel Star Trek Discovery trending as positive interest. No such luck for Madam Web. Deadline Hollywood writes, Social Media Analytics Corporation Relish Mix notices that with Madam Web, nobody is really excited about it. Naysayers are referencing superhero fatigue, Relish Mix writes, but specifically the female-centric and female group subgenre, comping the recent MCU The Marvels, saying this is another The Marvels concept. Why do they keep making female assemble teams? The industry better take notes of this. Some are confused. I think I've kind of mentioned this before, both in this video and in other videos, but I think the big problem, again, it's not that you have female characters. It's not that you have female leads. It's that every time you do it, you act like it's this revolutionary thing that you're the first one to ever do it. That This is like the greatest political statement ever made. And it's like, bro, you've been beating this horse for over a decade now, nonstop. And like it, it kind of like it occasionally bubbled up before, but like for the last decade, nearly decade and a half, this has been all you've been doing, right? Uh, you know, the MCU it really only started. I want to say in like 2016, 2017. A lot of it's like it, it really ramped up after Trump, right? It was a reaction to Trump, but um, you know, it, it, since the Trump election, it's been almost a decade. And it's been nonstop beating this dead horse, this like war drum of the first ever he- female, the first ever female, the first. It's, it's like how many first ever female characters, how many first ever black characters can you have before you realize that marketing tactic isn't going to work? And 
the, the thing is, like, you think of it as a marketing tactic, and I think some people think of it as a marketing tactic. And, you know, that, that was a fair thing to think when it initially happened because it, you know, it, it at that point they had some argument in some ways to make that argument. Right? There were some ways that that was a justified argument, even though it was kind of like half true or just not true depending on the context, right? Obviously the most famous, infamous version of this being Black Panther being the, uh, you know, the first black superhero beside the fact that Blade had come out like 20 years before that. Um but the big issue is it's nothing but this for the past decade, right? You're, you're trying to go after a minority audience for a decade and not attract the majority audience. And then you're surprised. And then not only not attract them, but aggressively and assertively telling them, this is not for you. This is for us. We don't like you. This is for us. Go fuck yourself. This is for us. And then it falls on its face because, oh shit, it turns out there aren't enough of us to have a two hundred million dollar movie and make a profit out of it, and then and then you go and blame the people that you told to go fuck themselves and not to come watch the movie. Why didn't you come see the movie? You should have come see the movie. We didn't make any money because you you're sexist and didn't come see the movie that tells you how sexist you are. Like it, it's fucking it's so delusional. It, it it reminds me of like arguing with your high school girlfriend, right? You know the 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 relationship you had in high school where you were both young and retarded and toxic, and Anything you say will be used against you, when, and you know if if you you know if you're wrong, you're wrong, and if she's wrong, you're wrong. That's pretty much what it is. It's like these girl, it's like people that never grew up past high school and never got past that like high school relationship type thing. With Dakota Johnson's casting due to the differences to the character in the comics, saying, "I thought Madame Web was an old crippled lady that sometimes helped Spider-Man with her visions." The movie was also mockingly compared repeatedly to another of Sony's Spider-Man less Spidey films, Morbius, with many feeling the scale is very small compared to other superhero adventures, reminding them of a CW show. Relish Mix also notices that despite Madame Web having the social media superpower of Sydney Sweeney's nearly 20 million followers, the pic's social media. Okay, where does Sydney Sweeney even come from? Because I feel like I had never heard of her until I want to say like two, <clears throat> not even two years ago, like a year ago, maybe two years ago. And then all of a sudden she's like probably the most famous woman on the fucking planet. Uh. Yeah, what is she? I've literally never heard of it. Okay, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Okay, I heard of her there. Yeah, I've heard of that. I actually haven't seen that. I've heard it's really good. I need to check it out. Um, and then, yeah, Madam Web. This is, the, like, the only things I know her from. Oh, she's in here. Oh, a little girl. Roll. Little girl in Heroes. Okay, I was going to say, I've seen Heroes. It's a good show. I didn't realize she was in it, but she's a little girl, so she's just in the background. Um, Criminal Minds, I've heard of, but haven't seen. 90210. Uh, she plays a girl in that too. Grey's Anatomy, I've never seen, but I've heard of. Okay, so she seems to be like pretty popular from TV. Then that makes sense. Um, she she's in Robot Chicken as Barbie. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, like I, I feel like Sydney Sweeney. Like you know, maybe it's just my perspective because I don't really follow a lot of Hollywood stuff very closely. Like I'm not really into the, uh, um, you know, the whole Entertainment Tonight type shit. But I, I, like, literally for me, she just came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, she was trending on Twitter one day, and then she never went away. Universe at 424 million across TikTok, Instagram, X, and Facebook and YouTube views is running 44% behind other superhero movies. Although higher than Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom's 334 million, it's far lower than the Marvel's 600 million reach. That only means having a social media following doesn't automatically translate to buying behavior. So whatever they paid Sydney Sweeney to be in the movie, and they did that for her social media following, wasn't worth it. Then again, nothing in this movie was, and frankly, it should never have been made. It never had an audience, and worse yet, it never had a selling point that would create one. And no, as it turns out, and the industry painfully is finding out, being a female-centric, all-female superhero team in and of its own is not a selling point. Let's see. I think it, it, it would be if it wasn't done every year or every other year as if it's this new thing that's never happened before. I think that's the problem, right? It, it's, you know, if, if it was something that happened once 
you know, every five or ten years, right? Um, it, it'd be like, people would be like, oh, cool, you know, we haven't had one of these in a while. Uh, this is interesting. I think the problem is they do one of these, like, every year. It's right? all female, all black, all uh, all this, all that, all, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, okay, it kind of loses the luster, right? Uh, and then on top of that, obviously, is the very, you know, the very political nature of a lot of these films, right? It's aggressively political and tells everyone that's not aligned with its politics that it fucking hates them. And it is very explicit and obvious and aggressive about that. And then once it fails, it accuses those people of being bigots for not going to see it. It's like, how dare you not come to this, uh, you know, come and pay, you know, thirty dollars or whatever it costs to go to the movies wherever you live uh to get bitched at for two hours when you're just trying to watch entertainment you fucking bigot see if hollywood noticed let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments yeah i think people just don't want to have a struggle session when they're just trying to you know when you watch marvel movies right some of them are very good um some of them have like very good stories very deep meanings and stuff like that right they they sometimes have like you know very subtle political messages, uh, you know, in the, in the case of, like, something like the Captain America, the Winter Soldier. There's obviously political messaging there, but it's, like, a lot more subtle, not as in-your-face. Uh, but a, a lot of these, like, woke movies, for lack of a better term, are aggressively, uh, you know, uh, they aggressively hate white, straight men. And they make it known, even in the advertising, that they aggressively hate white, straight men. And that it is not for you... This is for us. We hate you. This is our franchise now. You know, we've taken it over. Go fuck yourself. You're evil. And then, you know, they, they expect you to go buy a ticket for it and listen to a two-hour fucking, you know, Maoist struggle session re-education camp. Uh, you know, but it has the aesthetics of fucking Spider-Man. It's like nobody wants to see that shit, right? And you, you may be able to trick people into watching it once, maybe twice, but you know, the the more you pump out of these, the 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 less people are gonna fall for the bait, and then you know, and then obviously the whole thing with you know, like this being the first ever female movie, it's like okay, that only works you know, a couple times before people are like, wait a second, this is like the thirtieth first ever all female movie. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.